in Vermont, after COVID, a couple of things happened. Number one, uh, the enormous number of people from out of Vermont came and bought a second home. And those are effectively beyond reach now for local folks. Number two, a number of investors came to Vermont, bought up homes and turned them into Airbnbs. And those are now off the books. Um, and as much as we're aggressively doing all we can to build new affordable housing uh, in dealing with local regulations, uh, it takes a longer time in order to do that. And we've got a real crisis. If you've got workers in ski areas, they live an hour and a half away. There's no chance that they can get a good place to live where when I first went to Vermont, that was not a problem. But the third problem that is enormous is uh, workforce. We just don't have the folks that are the electricians and the plumbers and uh, the roofers uh, uh, and the drywall folks. That is a huge problem. And then really finally, uh, on the market, uh, if you're a contractor, you make a lot more money buying or building a, a pretty luxury second home as opposed to affordable housing. And we haven't really talked about those factors that are a real dynamic that I suspect affects not just Vermont, but I'll bet a lot of other places as well. Um, I'll start with you, Ms. Lopez. What about those factors and what do we do? Just one comment on that. Uh, thank you. Um, thinking about the second home, it's all over the territories and states I work. And so the ways that we're kind of tackling this is we're thinking about uh, taxing those second homes so we can create funds to offset the impacts, the real impacts. The other thing we're doing is when we can get accessory dwelling units for the workforce, um, not only is it a, cho a change in zoning, it requires financing so that you can help that home buyer provide that ADU, and then you want to have local residency requirements.